You have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. A philosophy Steve Jobs learned to embrace after a life of victories, setbacks, and surprising diversions that made him an agent of change in how we communicate and are entertained. He is gone, but his vision of our digital world very much remains. The story of his life in technology played out in three acts, the magnitude of which can only really be seen now, looking back. Act one, it's 1977. Jobs and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak introduced the Apple II, the first successful personal computer. But 1984 brought a much bigger milestone, the first personal computer that was really personal. Today, for the first time ever, I'd like to let Macintosh speak for itself. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. With a graphical interface, mouse, creative software, and whimsical design, it was a completely different animal from the sterile machines coming from Microsoft and Intel. Just as different was the TV commercial that announced the Mac, one they still talk about in the ad business today, and which showed Jobs knew technology sells better with a little hype. But none of that would be enough to hold back the juggernaut of Intel and Microsoft. And the difficulties Apple faced in growing the Mac business led to Jobs being shown the door at his own company in 1985. I was basically fired from Apple when I was 30. That was difficult uh, when it happened, but maybe the best thing that ever happened to me. Act two. Shortly after Jobs' ouster, he founds Next to produce a new kind of advanced workstation computer that runs on an object-oriented software architecture, which would become the basis of a dramatically new and better Mac OS years later. Similarly telling was the design of the Next machine. Stylish, austere, and breaking convention. Sound familiar? In 1986, Jobs also acquired the graphic arts division of Lucasfilm, turning it into Pixar, the studio that mainstreamed animated features, and can boast that its films deliver the highest average gross revenue of any studio in the film industry. But in classic form, Act 3 was Jobs' biggest. He retook the helm of a nearly bankrupt Apple and introduced the iMac the following year with what was the first of what we now call a Steve Note. iMac comes from the marriage of the excitement of the Internet with the simplicity of Macintosh. It was the first personal computer designed around the Internet. What Bill Gates and Microsoft were to the PC era, Jobs was about to become to the Internet and eventually mobile era. We got a lot of incredible stuff to show you today. His presentation skills at events such as Macworld would become legendary examples of showmanship and star power in industry. It's really beautiful. This is what it looks like. Detractors would deride Jobs' hype as a reality distortion field. But the iMac worked, and Apple began to turn around. But Jobs' single biggest course change for Apple was not a computer, but the iPod. What is iPod? I happen to have one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. There it is, right there. Introduced in October 2001, it was small in size, spacious in capacity, and looked good. But more importantly, it diversified Apple away from head-on competition with the Wintel computer makers, while luring away their customers when iTunes launched Windows support in October of 03. I'm here to report to you today that this has happened. <laughs> Apple began to rewrite the music business, become a major media player, and got its first taste of market dominance. But in terms of financial success, nothing tops the Apple product that was built on the shoulders of the iPod. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone, and we are calling it iPhone. But Jobs and Apple showed an uncanny ability to once again get the formula right, appear the originator, and make a piece of advanced technology seem simple, magical, and fashionable. With that same DNA, the iPad arrived in April 2010. We'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. And again, legitimized a category that other companies had only nibbled at the edges of for years. It's so much more intimate than a laptop, and it's so much more capable than a smartphone. Apple has had its share of flops, but they mostly pale compared to its hits. 
and there were always notes of hubris around the latter-day company, seen most in Jobs almost dismissing documented problems with the iPhone 4's antenna. We think it's affecting a small percentage of users, and we think some of that problem is inherent in most every smartphone. But mostly, Apple, since Jobs' return, has been a culture changer as much as a technology company, one of the biggest success stories in American business, and virtually indivisible from the identity of its CEO. And it seems right that the best epitaph for him might be found in the words of an Apple TV commercial that wasn't really selling anything except Apple. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.